Hey, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a brand new product from Bouge RV. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop in replacement battery, and it's got a self heating function in it as well. So that's pretty cool. Is it worth a look? Let's find out. So if you've been following my channel at all in the last several months, you know that I've reviewed a number of Bouge RV products. And I've always been pretty impressed with the quality of the products that they bring to market. And with this new product, with this battery, this is a, this is a first for them. And so I'm very curious to find out if this keeps up with the uh, Bouge RV standard that they've set on the previous products that I've looked at. And uh, also kind of find out, I'm kind of very interested in this self-heating capability that this battery has because that's a concern that a lot of people in cold climates have. Basically the issue is that once that battery core temperature reaches freezing, you really can't be charging it or you risk damaging the battery. You can discharge the battery because it'll largely self-heat when it's discharging anyway, but you can't charge the battery when they get uh, below freezing in the core. So this has a self-heating function and I'm curious to find out what impact, if any, that has on usable capacity and general performance. But before we can do that, we've got to get it out of the box. Let's see what we get. Here's the user manual. And as I've said in previous reviews of Bouge RV products, they always do a really nice job on their user manuals. And um, this appears to be no exception. Now the warranty statement on this says a five-year warranty service for the battery. So that's pretty good. All right, so rather than a strap or some other kind of device, they actually have uh, plastic molded handles in the case. And it looks like there are uh, tie downs on the side, little slots, you can make those out on top that you can use to strap this thing down if you were gonna use it, say, in a marine application, for example. So this is what you get, a battery and a manual. So there's no extra studs. There are some uh, plastic stud caps. A hey, quick interruption before I forget. After I did the unboxing that you just saw, Bouge RV actually sent me a revision to the parts list that they send with this uh, self-heating battery. And that now includes this little accessory. This is a 12 volt car socket that you can connect and it's got an inline fuse and it comes with uh, some extra fuses. I think it's got a 15 amp in there and then it comes with a couple extra 15 amps and maybe a 20 amp or two, and then it's got a couple of uh, like, I don't know, seven sixteenths or five sixteenths uh, rings on there that are appropriate for these M8 bolts. So you can directly connect this to this Bouge RV battery, and then you can run 12 volt accessories right off the battery, which is very cool. It's, uh, it's really a neat feature. And I just recently did a video, I'll put a link up here if you haven't seen it, about how to use a battery like this to charge power stations. Well, the solution that I described in that video uh, definitely works, uh, but this this would do almost the same thing, only easier. So, yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, back to the video. And uh, that's about it. So, uh, let's jump into the test and find out how well this thing performs. And we're back. All right, so I've been testing this thing for about three weeks now, just kind of off and on, running it through a variety of scenarios. And I've actually done multiple discharge tests on this, and every single time, this thing has actually exceeded the rated capacities, which we'll get into in a little more detail. But let's talk about the specs on this thing. And by the way, this thing on the top, this is the Victron Smart Shunt. I'll put a close-up uh, picture of that up here so you can see what that is. But basically, it's just got a lead here that comes off onto the positive pull of the battery that powers the, uh, the Bluetooth module, and then you connect with an app. It allows you to monitor your battery or your your battery array if you have multiple batteries in a bank wired together as long as the everything coming in through the black wire uh, is is uh, coming through the smart shunt you can monitor the entire you know state of your battery bank so it's a very cool device and that uh, Victron is is not cheap I actually I bought that with my own money that was not sent to me and uh, I'll we'll put a link to that below if you want to go check it out but uh, definitely recommend it if you're going to get into a configuration for power storage using these kinds of batteries. Highly recommend something like that because you can monitor the whole bank with that device right from your smartphone app. So let's get into some of the specs. So the rated capacity of this is 1,280 watt hours. So it's basically 12.8 volts nominal times the 100 amp hour 
rating on this. The first capacity test that I did, and I'll put a little bit of video up here if you're interested in seeing that, um, using my discharge uh, tester, I got 1292 watt hours and 102.8 amp hours. So definitely exceeded the rate of capacity. Then I tested it again after a full charge on my AC charger and I got 1311 watt hours. So even a little bit better at 103 amp hours. And then I wanted to test the self heating feature. So let's jump into that test and see how that went. All right, since I have not had freezing weather to be able to test this battery with, I have been freezing the battery in this Bouge RV E35 12 volt refrigerator. And it should be very well frozen by now. It's been at least 24 hours and it is three degrees Fahrenheit. So that should definitely be frozen and uh, should be ready to go. So let me pull this thing out and we're gonna hook it up and see how it behaves. I've got my Victron Smart Shunt on there and so we are going to monitor how the battery performs through the Victron app. And so if we just take a look at it right now, should be able to connect to it. And we are currently registering, you can ignore the state of charge that has not been calibrated for this, but we are currently pulling 11.58 volts. I did fully deplete this uh, using my DC discharge uh, tester before I put it in the freezer. So it's uh, been depleted to where the BMS cut it off. So we're currently sitting at 11.58 volts and we've got nothing going in uh, amps or watts. All right, so how the heating element is supposed to work is once it detects that an input charge is present, it will then use that input charge as long as it's at least 60 watts. Uh, instead of charging the battery, since the battery is in low temp disconnect right now, the BMS will use that power to uh, power the heating elements that are inside. And it'll use that to bring the battery up to uh, at least greater than, I think, 33 degrees Fahrenheit before it allows the battery to begin accepting a charge. And the heating elements uh, will stay on until the temperature of the battery is greater than or equal to a little over 46 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's how it's supposed to work. So you can input the power, but the battery will not charge. Instead, it will heat using that power. So the, the important point to understand there is it is not using the battery's power to power the heating elements. It's using the input charge because the heating elements will not engage unless it is detecting an input charge. So, but the BMS will protect the battery from charging until the heating elements bring it up to uh, above 33 degrees Fahrenheit. So let me go ahead and attach my charger. I'm gonna hook the negative up to the uh, system side of my smart shunt. And then I'll hook the positive up to the red terminal. And you can hear my charger just kicked on. Well, let's take a look and see what is happening. The reason we're reading 14.3 volts here is because we are actually just using this energy to power the heating elements. Once the battery starts accepting a charge, you're gonna see this number drop down and we're gonna know that this number is, uh, that the battery is being charged and this number drops to about uh, 13.5 and then starts to ramp up to about 13.7 or so uh, volts, and then um, our amperage will be much higher at that point. The amperage will be upwards of uh, 18 point something. And we'll know that the battery is actually charging at that point. So right now, this is actually just representing the 14.3 volts we're getting out of the charger. It's going right into the heating elements. It's been an hour and almost 15 minutes, but you can see we're now pulling about 13.37 volts and we are uh, pushing in 18.2 amps at 243 watts. So we are now absolutely charging the battery. But yeah, so you can see this definitely works and it protects the battery. And uh, this is again where we were warming the battery. And this is where we are charging the battery. So very cool to watch the voltage climb on that now. And uh, very impressed. So that self-heating feature actually is very cool and does protect the battery very well if you live in climates where you're going to see pretty hard freezes for extended periods of time. Now, that said, you can get by without the heating element in a lot of cases, as long as you insulate the battery in some way so it's not being exposed to freezing temperatures for many hours at a time, which is gonna cause it to get, to get uh, actually frozen in the uh, core of the battery cells. Um, but if that is possible to happen, you definitely wanna be able to protect the battery and either adding 
a heating system or getting one like this that's got the heating system integrated, it's definitely a good idea. This is nice because you don't have to worry about it. It just works as you saw. Pretty cool. Now, after I did that freeze, thaw, recharge, self-heat recharge test, I did rerun a discharge test, a full discharge test to make sure that uh, I hadn't lost really any capacity that is still performing. And I still outperformed the rated capacity even after all of that. So I got, in, the, in that case, I got 1,285 watt hours at 102.5 amp hours. So still in excess of the rated capacity of 1280 and 100 amp hours. Let's talk about some of the other specs. It does have a five-year warranty from Bouge RV and the dimensions here, if we look at that, it's 11.4 uh, inches in this direction here. It is 8.26 inches in this direction, so a little over eight and a quarter inches. And then it is just about eight inches from the, from the base to the top of the terminal here, if you include the battery terminal. And so it kind of gives you the dimensions if you're trying to plan on whether or not this will fit in your space. Now, Bouge RV says that you can combine this in series or parallel with up to four other batteries. So you can, if you combine them in series, get up to a 48 volt system. Uh, and if you combine them in parallel, you can get up to a 400 amp hour system. So you decide kind of what your needs are and you can configure it accordingly with up to four of these batteries. Now being lithium iron phosphate, this is rated for 4,000 cycles, a minimum of 4,000 cycles to retain 80% of its original capacity. So that's very good. That is much better than standard lithium ion or lithium uh, NMC, nickel manganese cobalt. So the battery weighs just about 27 pounds and it does have an IP68 water resistance rating. So it's basically waterproof which is very cool. You're not gonna to wanna to submerge it, obviously, but it can sit out in the weather a little bit and, uh, if it, and it's not gonna damage the battery. Now, this thing does have a maximum uh, discharge of 100 amps, but it will allow you to peak up to 300 amps for just three seconds. So it, it does give you that a little bit additional headroom for a very brief period of time if you needed it for something. And the last little tidbit that I wanted to reiterate on this, and this is something I mentioned previously, but when I, when I first got this, I was very, I was kind of concerned actually about how much power the heating elements would actually use uh, from the battery. But then I found out it actually does not use power from the battery to run the heating elements. It needs at least 60 watts input from a charge source, whether that's a, an AC to DC charger or uh, from solar input. So in either case, if you're getting at least 60 watts, it'll use that power to warm the battery and then once the battery is at a sufficient temperature, it will then convert that power into charging the battery. So very cool that you're not actually sacrificing capacity in order to heat the battery. So I did like that. So in conclusion, I think this is a very solid choice if, if you live in an environment where there's a possibility that your batteries may see freezing temperatures and maybe see them overnight when you're not getting any solar and you don't have really the option to sort of catch it before it happens and these things end up freezing. So this uh, is going to protect with that low temp uh, cut off and then the heating self heating element is going to keep you from damaging this very <laughs> expensive investment. So um, these are more expensive than the not heat non heating versions. But um, if you're in an environment where you need to protect your battery, I think it's it's worth considering paying a little extra to get that peace of mind of having the self heating element integrated into the battery. So check the description below if you're interested in getting more information on this uh, from Bouge RV. Uh, it's a pretty cool product. I've been very happy with how this thing has performed and I think it's definitely worth a look. So thanks for joining me for this video. If you found any of this information helpful at all, I'd really appreciate that thumbs up. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And I know it's hard to remember to hit that thumbs up. I forget it sometimes too when I'm watching videos, but um, if you can remember that, I would really appreciate that. So that's about all I got for you. I do have a bunch of stuff coming. I have more power stations, more solar panels. I've got a few other interesting surprises coming your way. Uh, in the weeks uh, coming. So stay tuned for those. Hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there.